Hello everyone and welcome to this talk. Uh, my name is Fredrik Ekre and today I will be discussing uh, Julia for scripting. Uh, the slides are available at this URL if you want to check it out later. So what is scripting? So in this talk I will define scripting as executing a script from, from the command line. So for example, uh, here is a simple script file, script.jl, with just a print, print call inside. So we can invoke the Julia binary and give it uh, our script and then we see the results uh, which just prints, prints out hello Julia.com. So this is what I uh, mean when I refer to scripting in this talk. So you often hear that there are some problems with this approach using Julia. Um, so what are these? Uh, the first one is uh, you might notice is the Julia startup time. Um, which here I compare, compare the same script uh, between Julia and Python. And as you can see, it's an order of magnitude slower in, in Julia. So this can be a little bit annoying. Uh, and the second thing I want to point out is package load time. Uh, I'm sure many of you have noticed that some packages take, take a while to, uh, to load the first time you use them. And the third one is compile time. So since Julia is a just-in-time compiled language, we have to compile the functions usually before we run them. So all of these things contribute to uh, what I would refer to as a problem with scripting. But it's worth not noting that uh, all of these things are being continuously worked on and improved with each Julia release. So is it really a problem? Well, I would say that yes, for short workloads, it is a little bit of a problem. So uh, just as a, a small measurement here, so if the runtime is comparable to the startup, startup time and the compile time, then uh, this is definitely noticeable. So for example, if you have quick tasks uh, for interactive use, it's a little bit annoying. But for longer workloads, uh, where, where the time you spend in, in compiling your code is negligible compared to the compute time, uh, then this doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't matter if the if you spend a couple of minutes compiling if you're running the code for for hours. So, for example, in cluster computations. So there are a few possible remedies to this. Um, so the first one related to the startup time is, of course, you can uh, reduce the number of startups, Julia startups. So this is often a recommended approach that you keep the same Julia session alive for a long time and then you continuously evaluate your code in the same session. So <clears throat> then you only pay for startup once and you pay for compile time once. And this is a very useful workflow, uh, for example, together with revise uh, to update code on the fly. But now we're not really scripting. Uh, so that's a little bit of a problem. Or, uh, and I noted that uh, after I sent in the abstract for this talk, there was a new package announced on the Julia discourse by Daniel Molina, which is called daemon mode. Uh, and I thought this was a really clever uh, idea. So basically you start up a Julia server in the background and then you have a client, which is just a wrapper script that passes everything to this background client, this background server. So <clears throat> this is of course, uh, quite clever, so you only need to start Julia once, but uh, it's a little bit cumbersome that you need to have this server running in the background. But definitely check this out. The other uh, way to solve issues is to save the compiled code and reuse it later. So for example, by enhancing the Julia system, system image uh, by appending compiled code corresponding to your workload. Uh, and this is particularly useful for uh, decreasing package load times. Uh, but this is again a little bit cumbersome because now you have to specify this new uh, custom sys image when you invoke your, uh, the Julia binary. Uh, and there's a, a talk in this conference by Christopher uh, on package compiler, so I will not go into detail, more details about this, but uh, that's also worth checking out. And the third um, way that I want to discuss here is to spend less time compiling. 
So for example, you can decrease and skip compiler optimizations using this dash dash optimize flag to the Julia uh, binary. And you can also utilize Julia's interpreter using the dash dash compile flag. <clears throat> so I want to show an example of this, uh, which is coming from a command line interface to Julia's package manager that I wrote called JLPKG. So in this uh, for this code, I use this compile flag and the optimize flag, and I set the compile flag to min, which is uh, requesting to compile the absolute minimum required, uh, and also set optimizations to zero. And to be fair, this uh, this uh, command line interface doesn't use an external program, so it also benefits from not using external packages. So just to, to show some com time comparisons here, uh, just a package status call. So it's about uh, half of the time compared to starting Julia and and uh, invoking the command directly. And this is just the difference between uh, the regular startup uh, uh, options compared to this compile mean and optimize zero. So here the time is cut in half. And to add the package, for example, data frames, it's uh, even better than half. And to remove packages, almost a third times the fast, uh, as fast. So it, this is clearly noticeable when you're working from the command line. It doesn't feel as laggy, uh, and you don't really have to wait for for these simple commands to uh, keep working. So that's all I wanted to share for this talk, and uh, thank you for listening.